video we had a look at how to create walls and how to create columns for our basement structure. Now we're going to build the next story up. Now the great thing is that once we've created one structure we could copy paste that mostly. Copy paste from our basement story to our ground floor. Now we're going to need to probably change it slightly. We've got our slab, we've got our walls. Now the structure of our walls is likely going to change at this point. What do we want the relationship, what type of building structure, wall structure do we want for the next story above? I don't necessarily know. Now what we've been talking about is concrete block internal and then maybe hebel on the outside of that, which would mean that we'd need to create a composite structure. We're not going to get into that in too much detail now. We've looked at that in a previous video. For now, we're just going to leave it as it is. All that we're going to do is to just change this to something generic. And I'm going to create a division wall between each of these apartments because this is what we're trying to do, create um, row housing or multi-housing. Now right click basement, show trace reference so we can see the wall below. Now ideally we're going to be using those columns as our grid line. Again it's just very indicative at the moment, we haven't spent too much time designing this. We're going to go back into the wall tool. This time when we're going to choose our reference line, we're going to choose the center of our wall as our reference line because this is going to be our party wall or intertenancy wall or our division wall. What's it going to be? Could be a lot of different things. Again, I'm not too concerned at the moment. We could call it brick structural for now. And for now, I'm going to make it wider. I'm going to make it 300 millimeters wide just to ensure that I've got enough width that no matter what I do, again, if I'm using this as a design tool, that I'm not going to get myself in trouble later by making it too narrow. So 300 plenty wide to create a division wall, an intertenancy wall. Now we're going to multiply this, same as before, move, multiply, again I'll leave it the same just like it was before, drag from this point to this point, again that should be 6 meters because that's what we had it before, that'll select them all, select them all, edit, group in group, group, great. We've got that, now I don't want to get into the habit of designing all of these apartments, for instance, in one go. It's not a very good method because I'm having to duplicate everything that I do. What's going to be better is I'm just going to use what I've done so far as a master plan, as a bit of an idea, and then I'm going to start designing just one of these. And then once we've designed one apartment, and I'm not really going to spend much time designing, I'm just really going to make stuff up in ARCHICAD, we're then going to use that to create a separate file which is a module file. So what do we need? We need a door. When we go into our door tool we'll see that this is a library of tools and the doors are broken up into empty openings. So if you wanted to create a porch with a, a bit of wall over and maybe a column, maybe that would be a good way to do. Maybe it's internally and it's a, a hallway but we want to have Maybe an arched opening, hopefully not. Maybe just a rectangular opening, we could use this. Of course, that would mean that we could have a lintel above rather than just breaking a wall in part. Garage doors, hinged doors, there's a lot of options. Rotating doors, sliding doors, sliding folding doors, and storefront. So there's lots and lots of options available to us. The most basic is probably the hinge door, and then of those, the most basic would be the door 21. Now there's settings within this setting that give us the ability to create different types of shapes, different types of leaf types. So that could be no grid, or it could be something which we're a bit more familiar with seeing as a front door. Doesn't mean it's better. And then of course we can place this into our wall. Now how do we know how to place it? How do we know where to place it? You could make sure it's in the right place before you click it. That's again not my method. How I generally do it is click where I want it to be. Now what I do need to do is make sure that my sun is on the outside of my building. So I'm going to click here first so the sun is facing outwards. Then I'm going to click to place which way the door swings. In this case I want my door to swing inwards. So I'm going to click on this side and I want it to swing left. So I'm going to click on this side and left click again one more time to place it. Now it's in place but it's possibly not directly where I want it to be. 
I'm going to grab this and move it to this wall intersection and then I'm going to move it back again and for now let's just move it one meter away from the edge. So again that's not technically the way that you're maybe supposed to draw a door that's the way that I tend to do it. It's faster I find if I just place it somewhere and then I can move it, adjust it from there. Windows, there's different window options available in ArchiCAD. Again, the most basic might be window 21. But the biggest problem that we have with windows, if we use this, it gives us only one window sash. If we want a multiple window sash, we need to choose whether it's a double or a triple or multiple. So you sort of need to define this and decide this earlier on because you can't easily change between them later. I'm going to make this window 1800 wide. How tall do I want it to be? Let's make it 1100 high with a sill height of 1000. So in this case I'm changing more settings before I place it. Same idea as the door, click outside first and then if it was asymmetric I need to choose which direction it faces that I don't in this case. Again move it to an edge as a reference point then move it away the set distance again let's just make that another meter just for fun. So now we've placed a door and a window into our wall. Now if you're interested in construction you'll note that this looks a bit funny because the window is or the frame is right up hard against the exterior reference line of the wall. We call that in this case the reveal. So I'm going to add an, a distance in the reveal. Let's make that 100. So we can see that's going to offset that frame further back into the wall. And it knows to do it back because I told it that this side is outside. So it's important that we get that right because when we have a look at how a, a window works, let's say show all. And then this is interesting. Uh, let's change this to something different. Call it brick structural as well. And zoom all the way in. Zoom, 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 zoom. Uh, at the moment we're underground, which isn't fantastic. <laughs> uh, but more to the point, um, let's adjust this. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Seal to wall base. They tricked me in 21. Normally this would be um, seal to wall base and I want that to be 1000. There we go. Now of course we're slightly problem here because we're underground. So I either need to do more changes to my site to make this work or lift this up out of the ground more. Which one am I going to do? I'm going to do the first one. And I'm going to create a veranda on this story or a porch I'm going to use the offset method this time. Let's make that two meters. And now let's go into the setting and make that minus 100. Show all in 3D. We'll see that this is slightly out of the ground. And again, back into solid element operation. The slab becomes my operator. The mesh becomes my target. Subtract with upwards extrusion. I'm saying this really fast, I know. So that means now if we zoom in, we'll see that our wall or our door and window are now no longer underground. But now we've got another issue where I've got <laughs> a big retaining wall right in front of potential houses. So of course, the point of this site is it's sloping. So if I want to make it all level, I'm going to have to do a lot of terraforming. I'm going to have to do a lot of site editing to get these levels to work. And I'm prepared to do that, but at the moment we're sort of just doing a little bit at a time to see and understand how it works. Now, once we've placed that door and window, we can still edit it. We can select that door, we can go back into its settings, we can change its size. We can see that's 900 wide at the moment. Now, door leaves don't come in 900 wide. So, what does that actually mean? Hopefully, you know enough about construction to ask that question. If we go into nominal sizes and tolerances, what we'll see is we can actually define that size based on a wall hole dimension, reveal, unit dimension, egress dimension, or leaf dimension. Which one's the right answer? There is no right answer. It depends on what you're trying to do. Now, if I was trying to make this work with block work, 
and I was I knew that my block work would be a an increment of 200 millimeters I might make this 1,000 meters sorry 1,000 millimeters and maybe something like 2200 high so that would work nicely for my block work wall hole and we'd see that that would end up leaving me with a leaf dimension of 970 by 2185. Now 970 is cool it's a big door but it's okay uh, 2185 is not fantastic what's this based on? It's based on more settings so if I then went into my door settings went into my frame details I could then be adjusting all of these sizes to make it fit with any type of door. Again, this is a very standard generic door. That's not necessarily based on any one manufacturer. And so we'd have to adjust this to suit our manufacturer that we'd be specifying. Or we could potentially download objects from a manufacturer's website. Let's say, for instance, that's Vantage and or AWS, and we could then use their door and window, which would already have all of the settings built in. Of course, there's other add-on programs like CAD Image, which is a great tool, but it's something that you need to buy. Um, and you can add that into ArchiCAD, and then you can use its tools to be able to make doors and windows a bit easier, and a lot of other functions that CAD Image has as well. And there's lots of other companies and websites, add-ons and manufacturers that we could use and use their standards but that's a general overview on how it works.